Greetings, it's Maxo Diddley here, and today I am going to be showing you how to make a GUI music player using Java JFrame in Java. This is what you'll have at the end of the tutorial. We have a little UI music player. We can choose a file by opening the file explorer with a WAV file filter. We can click on our file, it'll be printed out here. We can hit play. We can toggle if we want it to loop or not. We can also, if we want to pause it, and resume. If this sounds interesting, continue watching the tutorial. So let's get right into it. Firstly, all of this will be in the description below in case you just want to copy and paste, but let's get into it. Firstly, import the following libraries here. We're going to be needing all of these to make our music player. After, we have got our public class here. So it's public class, the name of the class, which is also the name of our project, in this case, which is Java GUI Music Player JFrame. We're going to do extends JFrame and implements action listener. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but basically we are going to inherit the JFrame class, meaning we can do stuff that a JFrame can do, like display, have buttons, text fields, all that cool stuff. Implements means we're going to add the actual listener interface to our class. In this case, this is going to be the thing responsible for checking if a button is being clicked. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to create a bunch of global variables, which means they can be accessed anywhere in this class. We are going to do private J text field file path ID. Then we're going to have four buttons, which will be play, pause, choose, and loop. We're going to then have a is paused boolean and an is looping boolean. We're then going to make a file chooser object which will be responsible for allowing us to pick the file and then a clip object and this is just going to be the thing that plays music. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to be creating our constructor method. So this is the method that plays when we create an instance of our class. So this needs to have the same name as this up here. Then we're going to do super music player. So this is just going to be the text. I don't know what this is called, but that little bit at the top of a window that has a bit of text, that's what it's going to be basically. And then we're going to do set default close operation jframe.exit on close. We want to close the jframe when we hit the close button or the X. And then we want to do set new layout, new flow layout. That's going to set a new layout for our JFrame. Next, we're going to assign some values to some of our global variables. So we've got file path field equals new J text field and 20 because that's the size. We do play button equals new J button play. Pause button equals new J button pause. Again, the text in here is going to be the text on the button. And then we want to assign our is paused and is looping variables to false because by default we are not paused and by default we are not looping. Next, we are then going to do four lines of code for each of our buttons. So we'll do play button dot add action listener this. What does this mean, Max? Well, again, we're keeping this super simple. So basically we're giving each button the ability to detect that it's being clicked, and then we can call an appropriate function when it's being clicked. So we need to add the action listener, which is going to listen for the action of being clicked. And we do that for all four buttons. We are going to do five add functions here. We're going to we're going to do add file path field, add choose button, add play button, add pause button, and add loop button. This is just simply adding these buttons and our text field to our JFrame, so they're now visible on the JFrame, and we can do stuff with them. After that, we are then going to do file chooser equals new j file chooser dot and file chooser dot set file filter new file extension filter wav files and the wav. So this is going to set the default file path of your j file chooser to be wherever your Java project is. And then this is going to set a new filter for our file chooser so we can only see wav files. And then the custom thing here will be wav files. Lastly, in our constructor method, we are going to do set size 500 and 100. That's setting the size of our JFrame. Set location relative to null, so it's just going to be in the center of the screen. And then set visible to true, so we can see it. And that's everything we need to do to set up our music player. 
So the next thing we're going to do in our Java GUI Music Player J Frame class, we are going to do at override. And then we're going to do public void action performed, action event, and event. So basically, we have got access to this action performed function. However, we want to change what happens when we detect a button click. So we're going to do at override so we can modify what's inside this function, or method, I should say. Inside, we are going to have some if, if statements. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if event.getSource double equals play button. So we're going to check if the play button has been clicked. The details of the event that has occurred will be in this event variable here. And then we can do dot get source and check where was this, where did this come from? And if it's equal to our play button, then it's like that means the play button has been clicked. So we can then call a function called play music. We will define this function later on in the tutorial. So we can do an else if. We can do else if event dot get source double equals pause button. What do you think that means? Well, it means, was the pause button clicked? We are then going to also do this for our choose button. So we can choose our the file we want to play. And we're also going to do it for the loop button. This also makes it really easy for us to add extra buttons if we want to. Now, why don't we go and define the functions that we're calling here? So we are going to do private void play music. Inside, we are firstly going to do if clip is not equal to null and clip dot is running, we're going to just do clip dot stop. So if we're currently playing music, we are going to stop that music. We also don't want to stop any music that's being played if there's nothing assigned to our clip variable. After that, we are then going to do a try catch statement. So we do try catch exception e system dot dot print line e. So if an error occurs, we're going to print out to the console what happened so we can debug what's going on. Inside the try statement, we're going to do file file equals new file path field dot get text. So we're going to get the text that's in our file path field and we're going to make a file object that points to that file path that points to the file at that file path. And then what we do is we do audio input stream audio in equals audio system dot get audio input stream and file. We're going to create an audio input stream that's going to get the audio from the file and then stream it to our clip object. If you want to know more about this, there's an eye open for corner for how to play music in Java, but you don't need to watch it for this tutorial. Then we are going to do clip equals audio system dot get clip and then clip dot open audio in. We're giving the music to our clip object. It's like put in a disc in a CD player. Then we what we want to do is we want to do if is looping. So basically if our loop variable tells us we should be looping the sound, we're going to do clip.loop, clip.loop continuously. Because if we have the loop button clicked, that means any music we're playing, we want to loop. And we need to make sure that any new sound we're playing loops if we want it to loop. After that, we do clip.start, which is the equivalent of pressing play on your CD player. And that's our play music function created. Now we're going to do private void pause music. And this is going to pause our music and resume our music if we are paused. So what we're going to do is we're going to do if clip isn't null and clip dot is running, we're going to do clip.start. We're going to do clip.stop, then is paused equals true and pause button dot set text to resume because our, we're going to use the same button for pausing and resuming we need to also change the text of the button to let the user know what the button will do when they click it we are then going to do else if clip not equals null and is paused so if we're actually paused we're going to do something different on this button than if if the clip was running and playing because since we're already paused, we want to then start playing music again. After that, we want to then do if is looping clip dot loop loop continuously. Basically, if our looping is toggled to loop, we want to make sure that when we unpause the music, it's going to loop. And then we do is paused equals false. And then we do pause button dot set text pause because after resuming audio, this pause button will then pause music when we next click it. After that, we are going to do private void choose file. And inside, we are going to do file chooser.set current directory new file and dot. 
to set the default directory to be where our Java project is or where this application is if it's built. Then we do int result equals file chooser dot show open dialog this. So we're going to open like a file chooser like you saw in the tutorial and int result is going to store the outcome of whatever we do. If result equals jfilechooser.approve option, so if we click a file and then click open, we'll do file selected file equals filechooser.get selected file. So we're going to create a new file object and it's going to be whatever the file the user selects. And then we're going to do file path fields.set text select file.get absolute file path. So in our little text field, that will have a file path. We're going to set the text of that to whatever the file path is of the file the user selected in the J file chooser. And then as you saw when we were playing the music, we're going to then read the, the text in there and find the web file that's located where the text says, which also means if you want to, you could type out the file path if you want to. Lastly, we now need to do our toggle loop function. So we do private void toggle loop. Then we need to do is looping is not equal to is looping. And then we do, so we basically swap between looping and not looping. And then we do if is looping, loop button dot set text stop loop. Like with our pause button, we need to change the text of the button to let the user know, right, this button's going to do something different when you click it. So that's what we're doing here. Then we do if clip is running, we do clip dot loop, clip dot loop continuously. So let's say we're currently playing some music. We haven't told that music to loop when we started it. We need to then tell this clip that's running to now loop because otherwise it wouldn't know to loop and to, unless we hit the play button again. But this way we can tell it to loop and not to loop by just clicking the loop button. Then we need to do an else statement and in the else we do loop button dot set text loop. Then we do if clip is running clip dot loop zero. So basically clip dot loop zero means it's going to tell the program to not to loop. So with Java in looping with the clip object, we're going to play the clip x plus one amount of times. So if we did clip.loop2, we would play the clip three times. If we did clip.loop0, we will play the clip once. It's a bit weird, but that's how it works. And we, can, we can't just tell the clip to not to loop. What we do is we do clip.loop0, because then that's gonna tell it, right, you're just gonna play this clip until the music stops type of thing. And that's how we can tell the clip to do so with clip.loop0. Underneath the toggle loop function, we're going to do public static void main string array args. This is something you're probably used to seeing. And inside we're going to do new Java GUI music player JFrame, whatever your class is called, by the way, two brackets and a semicolon. And this is going to create our Java music player. Oh, one quick thing before we play. I made one tiny mistake with this tutorial. So, I put an else statement after this if clip dot is running. You don't want to do that. You need to put the else statement for if is looping. So, this toggle loop function, this is what it should look like. Apologies for that super minor mistake. But, with that corrected, let's hit play. So, we're going to firstly choose a file. As you can see, only WAV files are shown. We can also do all files and there's an extra pom.xml. But we'll go to WAV files to go to look at my horse. And very quickly, we can toggle the loop button if we want to. But let's just hit play for now. So as you can see, it can play for music. And we've just paused it, so let's resume. Then it turns back again when you tug on it. And as you can see, it can it can pause and resume just fine. In fact, coming up it's going to be saying, ooh, that's dirty. It's winky, ooh, that's dirty. As you can see, I've listened to this song too many times and I have no regrets. But this can successfully pause and resume. Let's click on choose file and pick a shorter file to play to test out the loop in. So we're going to toggle the loop and then hit play. As you can see, we can hear the Quagsire loop. Now Quagsire is objectively the best Pokemon, so this will never get annoying. 
But let's pause it for argument's sake. We've paused it. Now let's hit resume. It continues playing and looping. What if we just hit stop loop? Well, it stopped. It finished playing the Quagsire Cry, then it stopped. So, thanks for being a great audience. Now, this isn't a perfect music player. Like, you know, if you keep spamming the loop button when there's no file to play, you might get an issue. Maybe if there's no file to play and you hit the play button, you could give a little message saying, Oi, put in a file path type of thing. There's a lot you can do, but here's a foundation for you to build upon. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more Java tutorials.